Hey guys, I'm back here again. Today is uh, Monday around 12 noon over here, so I thought I'd do a um, quick video here for you guys. We got a uh, client's machine here. They, had, they uh, dropped off a snapper over here this past week, and they were complaining they had multiple issues with the machine over here uh, specifically for that. Uh, the first issue they had was the machine would not drive, and uh, they wanted that checked out first and foremost, and, and the, uh, the guy told me in a phone quote, he didn't want to dump a, a boatload of money into the machine. And the second problem was um, he was having a hard starting situation with the machine as well too. So he wanted that examined as well too. So we got the machine fixed over here and running. So this is the uh, Snapper 28-inch uh, uh, high vac uh, deck on this one right here. This is the older, older machine right here. So we'll give you a shot of the uh, uh, engine tag and also the other information on here as well too. So you can see what we actually did this machine. Uh, the first thing was we uh, we did take off the uh, disc on this machine here. Here's here's the um, uh, clutch uh, clutch disc. We had to replace the entire clutch disc thing on here. Let me get out of the bag here. This is what your disc they, they call it like a pressure plate disc system on these machines. And unfortunately, you have to replace all three of these pieces on here. They have a um, let's put, put these in a line here. So you got the uh, main uh, main disc right here that has the rubber. Uh, for, you know friction material on here for that right here. It's a rubber wheel and as you see right here It's totally, you know totally disintegrated on it. It's basically almost down to bare metal on here for that And these wheels are probably about a, um, I say about a three eighths inch The actual rubber portion is about a three eighths inch thick on here. So you gotta replace that you have to replace this uh, Clutch piece they call between here. Then you have another piece. You have another disc uh, Plate right there as well, too. So you have to replace all three of those pieces whenever you're doing the actual uh, clutch uh, clutch job right there for that. So you got one, two, and you got three replacements on there. So see this one got quite a bit of uh, wear on there for that. And uh, that's what it looks like after three pieces on here. And what happens is over time is the um, rubber wears down on here and uh, typically we see uh, jobs over here like this where uh, the guys, um, you know, like horsing the machine around out there and uh, it basically burns up your rubber uh, piece on here for that and you have to um, you know put your transmission in um, you know uh, brake on then you, then you want to shift it up to the next gear out there for that because if you don't you're going to um, basically cause the premature wear to your drive system on there for that and that's what happened right here this guy was jerking around his yard out there and he has uh, i think he actually had his son out there cutting the grass and his son was like stopping starting on a hill out there for that and he kept on doing like a hard shifting out there and it caused the uh the wheel to get bad quite fast on here because uh, he told me his son was complaining about the machine like smelling in the back like smelling like burnt rubber out there for that so that's one reason why the machine failed uh, quite um you know quite fast in her for that because these things should last at least uh at least 10 to 15 years out there for reference points guys your whole your whole clutch uh, you know drive system on these machines right here for that so we'll give you a shot of the engine tag on here plus the engines uh, information for that this one has the uh, Brigham Stratton Intec 12.5 horsepower over valve engine on this one and here's your engine tag so this is a uh, uh, 2007 model year specifically for that so this one has the reliable Briggs engine over here here you go there's your date Model number date and code on it, gold stuff like that, 2007. So, things about uh, seven, seven, about 13 years old right there for that. And here's the back of the engine over here. And the guy was really messing around with the machine. You see, this, this stuff's like all bent up on here and everything else. And he didn't, he, he, he basically only wanted the machine to be, you know, runnable for the yard out there for that. And he really didn't care about, um, you know, dumping a big boat of, uh, you know, a big load of money into the machine. He just wanted to get the machine repaired so it'd be just adequate to run out there for that, unfortunately. Here's your mall number, the uh, Simplicity Snapper. Right there, there's your mall number, 281-2523-B is in boy, V is in Victor, E is in Edward. You got your part number, 7800104. You get your serial number down here, 2797208, specifically for that. So, uh, we also installed a new air filter. The guy did not have any air filter in the machine at all. Uh, the spark plug needed to be replaced, but it was totally black. And I think we did the oil change, I think, on here. Let me double check it here. Yeah, the oil was changed, so the oil was perfectly good now in here. The oil was black in there before. It looked like the guy just had never changed the oil in maybe quite some time out there for that. So that's what it looks like right there. Uh, your, bat your battery on these machines is 
directly underneath the seat here. So if you're looking for the battery out there, it's directly underneath the seat uh, by your gas tank right there for that. So your gas tank on the top, uh, if you start having problems, like you, you, you like buy one of these things like used, always make sure your gas cap lid is open on here. You have a little uh, valve on the top here, guys, right here. It opens and closes, so you can close it whenever you're putting the machine back in your garage or shed. And you open it back up whenever you're either cutting your grass. So always keep it in the open position when you're either cutting your yard. Because that's your vent on top of your gas tank right there. And you got your fuel line down here as well too. You got a fuel filter in there. I think we put a new fuel filter uh, filter on here. The first thing we did on it because he was he was getting restriction in the uh, fuel line there because um uh, I think he was trying to you know um. Um, do some kind of repairs himself over there. I mean, he, he, kept, he kept on claiming he's telling us he was a handyman out there and he was basically uh, just trying to mess with the machine himself over there and he could not get the machine running. So we put a new fuel filter, the correct one. He had a bigger uh, fuel filter off of a, um, um, you know, call a, 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 a Kohler machine that was designed for a fuel pump on it. It wouldn't, it wouldn't allow proper flow, uh, proper flow because you have to have a white uh, disc one in these, on these ones right here. That's your typical Briggs white disc one. That's perfect for having your gravity feed system on here. So you got your uh, throttle over here as well too. Here's your uh, full speed and choke. Chokes all the way forwards and your full speed right there. There's your idle speed right down there. And there's your slow with the turtle right there for that. Your uh, deck on this one, it's a uh, 28 inch uh, high vac deck on this one specifically for that. And uh, on the front up here, you have your uh, switch for the uh, key up there as well too. So there's your key switch, and on your pedals down here, you have your blade, uh, your your blade pedals. You have to engage and disengage that to uh, turn your blades on down there. Then up front, you got your good old clutch. That's your clutch pedal right there. That's your clutch and your brake right there. So whenever you're out there driving around. I always advise to put the brake and clutch pedal fully forwards whenever you're switching from first, second, third, fourth, fifth gear out there because if you don't do that, you will prematurely wear out your uh, your clutch uh, pressure plate underneath the transmission right there for specifically for that. Okay, on the other side here, you got your transmission lever shifter over here as well too. You got uh, first gear all the way up to fifth. So there's, if there's fifth, there's fourth, and there's third, and there's second. It's first, and there's neutral, and reverse is all the way back on here like so. So that's your gearing on there. All it does is move your, um, basically, uh, it moves this uh, disc back and forth on a big pressure plate, and that's how you get your very drive on specifically for that. So that's how it works, and that's how it functions for your snapper uh, riding lawnmower specifically for that. I'm going to go ahead and sing this thing fired up here for that. Turn it on here. Okay. Get to the keys over here. Got the put the uh, put it on choke over here. Okay, all the way down. Brakes all the way down. There we go. Sounds good. Here we'll go to show the engine here. Engine's running good. Sounds good. Transmission here while I got some time. Take the uh, clutch off. Okay, got the clutch off down there. Make sure you put your foot on there all the way down. And you move your transmission lever to the uh, first gear right as it is. First gear notch. So you get a shot there. Here's your first gear notch. And we'll release the uh, brake. And it's moving good now. Give it some gas here. My other hand here going.
it, put it back on park again. Let's check out the rear uh, reverse. Okay, put, put it back in neutral, and we'll take the reverse. See how it goes in reverse here right now. To verify that's functional. And driving good backwards. That's good. Working good for that. Brake looks good. The brake works. Put back in neutral over here again. And we'll try it in second gear. Check it out in second gear now. And we'll release the uh, brake pedal down as well. And it jumped a little bit there, so that's good. Got a nice grabby uh, uh, positive engagement. Okay, try it reverse again. Put it back in reverse. And back it up again. We'll try the other gears as well, too. So bear with me here for a couple of seconds. I think put it back into position over here. Okay, put it back down into park. Always make sure it's in park down before you switch gears. Okay, put up a neutral, looks good. And we'll try, we'll try, we'll try in fourth gear right now. We'll try in fourth gear. See how it goes there on idle speed as it is right now. And we'll release it from the pedal. That's good. We've got a good uh, positive feeling on there. That's driving good. Machine's driving great. No weird signs. Okay, shut it off there and back it up again. Uh, these transmissions, by their design, they will have more noise than most, uh, uh, you know, most modern type of transmissions out there. You have a hydrostatic drive, or you have a, a typical like a five-speed, uh, you know, six-speed gearbox. They will have more uh, noise simply because. They have a uh, unique drive system on there for that, so let me back it up here a couple seconds here. Okay, let me back it up. Then we'll try it into high speed gearing right now. Okay, brakes all the way down. Try that. And we'll put it in the fifth gear. There's fifth gear right there, all the way down to fifth gear. And we'll release. Man, it's driving okay. Take it up on a little hill right here. You should be able to put this thing on low engine speed and high gear to really test test the yeah, drive you get out on there. This one's working perfectly fine. That's a good way to uh, check the health of your machine's drive system. And it's driving okay, so we'll go ahead and shut that back down. There we go. And we'll go ahead and engage the uh, blades on here as well too. I'll put it in neutral. That right now, neutral. Back in neutral. I can I can take my foot off the uh, the pedal downer safely, and we'll engage the blade. So I'm gonna do that right now. I gotta turn the speed up. Okay, let's put the blades in the gear. passes the function test the uh, engine drop the engine runs okay the uh, blades work good they don't have any kind of problems with the blades they're good to go so engine runs good the blades engage and also the drive works as well too so three out of three machines ready to go back to customer and hope they're satisfied with the repairs on the machine so go ahead and try it out here again back it up here put it in reverse Good to go. Stop it again. We'll go ahead and put it in. Uh, we'll put it in number third gear right there. We haven't even tried third yet, so we'll go ahead and do that. And jump nice and forward, nice and quick. Brake stop, nice and positive brake grab. 
Sounds good to me. Go ahead and shut off here. Take a look at it again. So the machine passed uh, all three tests. It's functioning fine. The engine's running good. The uh, deck's working good. And the drive's working good. So it's uh, good to go back to the customer and hopefully they're satisfied with their repairs on the machine. This is the uh, Snapper 28 inch uh, deck assembly on here for that. So if anybody has any comments, questions, whatnot about this uh, you know, type of machine, it's uh, running good for us over here. This is a uh, small uh, machine designed for a small yard out there specifically for that. This is not for a, uh, you know, kind of a real big yard out there for that. So if you do find one of these things in uh, good condition, uh, they do hold their value out there for that. So if you want to buy one of these things, I'd say go ahead and do that. Just uh, always be uh, mindful to verify the drive system is functional on the machine before you buy the machine. So if anybody has any comments, questions, feel free to drop me a message, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible, guys. I'll see you.